Ubisoft just dropped a gameplay walkthrough of Assassin's Creed Mirage, so I'm going to break down this new trailer for you in detail, as there's a lot of very cool info hidden in plain sight here. So by the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding on what to expect when this game releases on October the 12th. So let's start with this wanted poster, which is clearly an illustration of Basim in his Assassin Apprentice blue robes, with the Arabic at the top of the poster stating killer, and the Arabic at the bottom stating wanted for justice or dangerous murderer, depending upon your translation. And we know this thanks to Malik Tefaha, Ubisoft's senior production manager, who posted a more detailed animation of it on Twitter. I also wonder if the posters will change from blue robes to red once we do become a master assassin, but I think that's probably asking a little bit too much in this game. Now, these wanted posters have a purpose in the game as taking them down or removing them from walls reduces your wanted level or notoriety level, meaning guards are less likely to attack you, just like in the old AC games, and I'll talk about that more in this video shortly because we can next see Basim performing the iconic leap of faith here and it looks like the team have re-added in the pigeons near rooftops which is a subtle indication that you can safely jump down from that point just like in the old games again but what isn't like the old games is this clip of ostriches in the wilderness which is new to the series I believe I can't remember ostriches appearing in any other game with Jean-Luc Salah the creative director confirming that we do have some wilderness to explore a mirage outside of the city. So that explains that clip there. We then pick up another quick clip of Basim walking across a rope above what looks like one of the four commercial or industrial districts of Baghdad with a follow-up clip of Basim using a small canal boat, which may be a nice teaser to potentially using it in some sort of infiltration or stealth side mission. I do hope so anyway. Now, this very quick shot looks like the Dur Curry Galzu, which is an enormous man-made pyramidal temple structure constructed with mud bricks that is over three and a half thousand years old and is still standing in Baghdad. One of the reasons why I love the AC games is this historical stuff included in the world just like this. Now, our next notable clip is a first look at Nihao with the narrative director Sarah Bellew describing her as Basim's childhood friend, fellow street thief and partner in crime who will contribute to the story so do expect to see a lot more of her in Mirage. But let's move on past some very cool combat here to our first look at the game's UI and interface which in my opinion looks very clean and I'm a fan of it so far. Now I'm going to pause the video and break this down into three sections for you. The first being this text on the left hand side of the screen which is clearly our quest log or case log with the name of the mission and its current designated objective below that title. We then get the compass at the top of the screen which reprises itself from Valhalla and remember Mirage is built on the same Anvil Next 2.0 engine that Valhalla is so it does make sense to see it reprised here in this game and let's take a look at a few of those icons on the compass if I zoom in a little more for you here. We have the Assassin's Emblem, which I assume is the Assassin's Bureau, the Golden Sun or Cog looking icon being the main objective, as well as the Bag icon, which I imagine is a vendor or trading merchant. And then we have the Needle and Thread icon, which I can only conclude is perhaps the tailor for changing the color of our robes and upgrading our gear just going on previous AC games. Now, if I just just pan over to the right hand side of the screen here for you. We also have our wanted map icon, which we discussed earlier, that is part of the notoriety wanted system. And let's take a look at that now because we can see it in the bottom right hand corner here. We have three icons or three wanted levels. The eye is the first one, which I presume means that the crowd and NPCs in the game will recognize and react to us. But if we continue to increase that meter to the next wanted level by doing some very assassiny stuff in public, we'll get archers on rooftops trying to search for us in the streets below, according to this bow icon. That's what I'm assuming anyway. And then our third level being a weapons icon, which I imagine will be the game sending out the big boy bosses or perhaps some bounty hunter zealots to hunt us down in one-on-one -on -one combat. So very much looking forward to exploring what that is. Now, let's unpause this trailer and watch back in parkour forward here and notice how the animations are a lot smoother as they've been improved since Valhalla according to the development team and let's go ahead and take a look at this screen in a little bit more detail after the assassination as we can see the guards react to this kill as well as new UI stuff popping up on our screen to go through the first being this quick icon on the taskbar which looks like a black shield which we've seen before in previous AC games which is a marking tag that will appear on enemies heads when you mark 
mark them with your eagle or just by aiming at them. We also get a quick clip of this small pattern icon, which does remind me of Valhalla's quest icon, and I could be really wrong here, I could be going off piece, but thanks to the confirmation clip earlier of the Dur Curry Galzu temple, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a historical place to visit in game and learn more about, just like we saw in the Discovery Tour add-on or DLC in Valhalla. So it would be super cool to have this mechanic integrated from the game's launch, big fingers crossed there. Now we also have the red exclamation point icon here, denoting that enemies are aware of you and more fighters on site. And let's zoom into the bottom left-hand corner again, because this has just appeared whilst we've rotated into combat. And upon review, it looks like our health bar, which is white with our stamina or energy bar being orange and the potion or elixir icon representing the available health pots in our inventory ready to consume if we get ourselves into a little bit of a pinch. But let's now zoom back out across to our notoriety bar though because it has increased by 25% reaching level two after assassinating that guard in public. So archers will now be on the rooftop searching for us. Now let's move the video forward here because we can now interact with scaffolding to make it collapse in game, helping us escape. And this is super cool to me because it's almost like a contextual interaction, if you want to call it that, in that we don't have to activate it if we don't want to, but if we choose to do so, we'll get a cool cutscene that flows really nicely and assists our escape from a gameplay standpoint. And speaking of flowing, we get some nice footage here of the new parkour upgrades in a little bit more detail. And I'm sure you will be the one to decide if you like the look of it or not. But in my honest opinion, I do think it is a solid improvement from Valhalla. And notice how the archers are already on the rooftops here after we've leveled to that second level of that wanted or notoriety system, which is really good to see. Now, if you are enjoying the video so far, please do leave a very swift like down below. So thank you very much for your support. And good news, I'm running an AC Mirage game giveaway. You just need to be a subscriber of the channel to enter and I'll pop the link in the pinned comments for you. So very best of luck to you. Now, as Basim goes on to enter the Assassin's Bureau here, meeting up with his mentor Roshan and Fulad, the Rafiq of this bureau, which basically means he's in charge of this district and keeper of assassin secrets here. And let's actually take a listen to this Arabic phrase spoken by several characters in the bureau. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now this means praise be God or thank God, which is a authentic Arabic and Islamic greeting that will feature a lot in this game. So it is something to be aware of. And in this clip, we can see Basim giving Fulad a eagle feather, which he's quite pleased with, meaning that the AC1 kill ritual is still observed and respected here as seen in the story trailer release as well. We also get introduced to Abu Jaffa Muhammad in the Bureau, who is an historical person of note and inventor in this time period. And I can definitely see him fulfilling a very similar role to Leonardo da Vinci in the Ezio games, where he will craft new tools for us to use as he seems to be responsible for the tools on the table, as we can see right here. And let's go through each one now, starting with the blow dart that is capable of putting people to sleep or poisoning them to cause them to go into a fit of rage, just like those old AC games. And even though we don't get a preview of the other five tools, we can certainly make educated guesses here. The top one is clearly a fire torch to light the way in dark areas. And to its left is clearly a throwing knife that we've seen showcased a few weeks ago. Now below the knives, we have what I reckon is our noise maker tool, which is used to distract guards and get the drop on them. And at the bottom of this tool wheel, I think this may be our trap or mine of some kind. As Jean-Luc Sala, the creative director, did mention months ago, we can lay traps in the crowds to surprise guards. Now to the right of that, I think this may be our smoke bomb, which we've also seen in action in previous footage over the last couple of months to cover our getaway, which completes our tall infantry options here. Now, next up, we do get a look at the contracts board in the bureau, which I believe is side content missions with each of these contracts being presented as a page on the board. Now, when we select a contract page, we can view what the mission is and the rewards we'll get for completing it. And I wanna bring your attention to this icon, which looks like a faction specific token. And the reason why I say that is because Stefan Boudon mentioned in the developer diary video last year that we need to pay factions with a special currency to get them to work for us, which we saw a small clip of in the recent Back to the Roots video. And as you can see here in the top left-hand corner, there is three types of faction tokens here, which we can store away for future use. And 
could spend on those three factions. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get mercenaries, merchants, and maybe some local musicians or something like that. But we'll just have to wait and see there. There's also two other rewards available here, with this icon being what I think is skill points as a reward, because Odyssey used the same icon for that, and what looks like components of some sort, which I reckon we'll be able to use to upgrade our tools back at the workbench. Now, as for what all the contract page illustrations are, I think the swords mean full-blown combat or the complete removal of all enemies in a specific area, with the fortress and hand icon being stealing a specific item from that location, and the hidden blade and skull icon being, of course, assassinate a specific target, which all sounds like really good fun, really good side quests to me. Now let's leave this bureau and take a look at this meditation mechanic because we did have it in Valhalla but we also picked up a clip in this reveal trailer a few months ago where Bassam meditates on a bench specifically and if we just pause the clip here and zoom in you can see the pass time button pop up which suggests to me that we can't meditate wherever we want to in this game like Valhalla but specifically on benches. Now let's move forward here in the trailer until we get to this point and no Notice the locate area tab above the case name. And this is cool because that hot or cold type of mechanic from Origins does seem to be implemented here in Mirage instead of Valhalla's general objective area where we need to find a target, which means we then need to locate our enemy target specifically by marking them within a few feet of where they actually are and not just this blanket space that we need to run around in and try and find. Now, Bassam's Eagle and Kidu get shot down by a marksman here, so we have to subsequently get closer to the fortress to fully infiltrate it. But check this out. We now have the first look at the assassin focus bar in the bottom left-hand corner, where Bassam will be able to kill five targets in a kind of like Shadow of Mordor mechanic, which we will get a full preview at in just a minute. But as Bassam climbs this wall, the original gangster, Eagle Vision, is now back in town, which is awesome to see. And what's incredibly cool about this, in my opinion, is a small upgrade. It's this new addition of the guard's field of vision, as you can kind of see here, if I just zoom in. I think that's a really nice feature or add-on there. But speaking of which, we do get a good look at social blending for the first time, which requires three or more NPCs to actually get it to trigger. And moving forward, we then see Bassam activate his tool wheel, which looks like we can only equip one tool at one time, but we can also very swiftly switch between them whilst holding the RT or R2 controller button, as you can see here as well. Now, after putting the guard to sleep and assassinating the target, notice how Bassim's assassin focus bar fills up slightly, which is clearly how we're going to have to charge up this ultra ability. We then pick up a first preview of that noisemaker tool we were chatting about earlier, similar to the cherry bombs in Unity, it seems, that distracts the guard with sound and allows us a perfect opportunity to initiate a very awesome looking chain assassination animation, which is great to see it return here. Now, even more interesting details to note is these actual stone handholds on the tower when Bassam is climbing it. And this is super big for me because I think it suggests that we're not able to climb anything in this world. It's like no longer an option. In fact, it seems that we can only parkour up buildings if there's actual structural handholds to do so, just like in Origins. There's also this yellow warning icon flagged while climbing up this tower. That means a guard is watching Basim climb up from afar, which I think is another nice hint to the upgrade in that detection mechanic as well. Now, after the archer is dispatched, our assassin focus bar is now full up and we can call in our eagle to find our target and mark him specifically as we can see happen here and this is where it gets a little bit spicy because after getting to the top of the roof we can see eagle vision being activated again where the color coding of this vision mechanic is based on ac1 and ac2 red being for all killable enemies yellow for our specific mission targets blue for our allies and white for hiding spots or information on the map and this is where we see assassins focus in action by marking each target respectively, spending those assassin focus bars that we've accumulated. And I would compare this move to the Valhalla teleport bow ability in the Dawn of Ragnarok DLC. Now, I believe the canon or lore reasoning behind this ability in this game is because the Animus cannot render Bassam's movements so fast. So he's not actually 
teleporting, but does have this ability available because he's actually Loki reincarnated as an Isu and the Animus is completely freaking out about it. So that's why it looks like he's teleporting because it's just not rendering quick enough. We then see Bassem lay a trap ahead of the boss assassination to assist in the escape. And when the kill is initiated, we pick up some superimposed cinematic camera angles, which I really do hope appears frequently in the game for more high value kills as I think it looks absolutely terrific. Now, after the assassination, Bassem breaks the defense bar of an enemy guard with a parry, which then prompts a kickback move that I imagine is what we saw here in the trailer a few months ago. And this also prompts a kill button to trigger on screen as well. So a couple options available there in combat, which is very similar to AC1 in that regard. And I wouldn't be surprised if it is indeed a tribute to that type of combat. Now, that trap Bassem laid earlier comes into effect against this big boy guard here, which also prompts a Valhalla style kill prompt again here and while fleeing the area we also get to see the smoke bomb tool in action to assist in Bassem's escape emphasizing what Sarah Bellew the narrative director said about this game as a whole where you will approach the target hunt the target strike the target and then rush to remain unnoticed. Now I've got another Mirage video for you that I think you'll really enjoy, which should be popping up on your screen right now. But if it isn't up yet, consider liking and subscribing if you're new here. I made over 200 videos on Valhalla covering the game from start to finish, and I will be doing exactly the same thing for Mirage. So it would be great to have you along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers for stopping by. And as always, coffee is on me.